we were talking about atonement at the lunch table, atonement might be equated with total escape from the past and total lack of interest in the future. Total escape from the past and complete lack of interest in the future. So now you know why Eckhart Tolle wrote The Power of Now. Now you know why all the mystics and sages... Wait, again, atonement, total escape from the past and what? Total lack of interest in the future. Okay, okay. Yes. Yeah. It's acceptance. And then you're present and you can be fully present with whatever is with you. You know, it's like, it can look however it looks. You know, then you're really content. Truly you're in a state of contentment when you come to that place. Because as long as you believe the past is real, you're going to have these ego imagination thoughts, scenarios of the future. Like, hmm, this is the way I want my life to go. And those are ideal expectations. And it never works out. I mean, you always get disappointed when you have these expectations. Cause so even, isn't the past what you are made of? Or aren't you what your past is made of? Yeah, the so ego. Only the ego, not, ego. not the not, spiritual stuff. Not the spiritual stuff. Yeah. So basically you're letting go of, that's why we had D on the first page. Basically D is my belief in lack taking the form of an image of self out of the world. That, that D in here is the past. And you're going to have, and D is generating E. So because you believe in D, which is the ego, you're generating E, expectations. And then it happens over and over and over. That's why the serenity prayer is really the whole Course of Miracles boiled down into one prayer. You know, God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. What is it that I can't change? The script. It's like watching a movie, I, I mentioned before, like watching Gone with the Wind and saying to, you know, Red Butler, don't you tell her that, I've watched this 50 times, you treat her like a lady, and then you're watching again, hoping that Red's going to be kind and courteous and gentlemanlike, and he goes, frankly, my darling, I don't give a damn. Ah, you did it again. <laughs> but see, it would seem stupid to react and get emotional to a movie. But people do it all the time. <laughs> they, they, they forget that it's a movie and then they get all caught up in it. But what we're saying is, is, yes, you have to let go of the ego, and then you let go of the expectations, and then you can be fully present and fully in alignment with your spiritual reality. So this, this all makes sense if you can follow these ideas, because it's like you, you deserve happiness. God wants you to be happy all the time, you know, just eternally happy. And that's what God's will is for you, to be happy all the time. And it's only this ego and these expectations that block, like dark clouds that get in the way and keep you from the happiness. So you're, you're watching a movie that's not real. So when you cry, you're not actually crying about the movie. It's what's inside It's like the joy. And it's the ego. Yeah. But, yeah. But it can be the ego. If you're crying tears of sadness, yeah. uh, it, it's the ego. If, like, I know a lot of times I'll watch that movie as it is in heaven, and I'll just start crying because I feel so much joy and love mm -hmm. that it's like I can't contain it, and it's almost like it squirts out of there. So they've actually studied tears, you know, they've actually studied the biochemistry of tears. Is the, is the sad tears and happy tears? Yes, they're, they're <laughs> actually, there actually is. They are oh. different chemical makeups. They've actually studied the tears when you're so happy that you can't contain it and those tears come down versus tears of loss and grief and sadness and everything. The, the chemical makeup is actually different even in the tears. Oh, right. So, even when you just respond to, with happiness to the movie, though, it's still the same process as if you had a responded with sadness. So, isn't it? Well, you, you know what I'm saying? Like you're still it's all coming from your mind. Yeah, it's all, it's, it's all being generated mind. from your mind. But, but it's like, if you're watching something that is so reflective of, of the miracle, which, yeah. like for me, a lot of the movies I have in my yeah. collection, I watch them over and over. It's A Wonderful Life, and yeah. Ground, Groundhog Day, and you know all of them. Yeah. And I have, a lot of times I have the same tears and same emotions as if I'm watching it for the first time, which it does feel like that. And it's all it is, is just an expression of love, just like an overflowing, my cup runneth over.
But it's the same dynamics. It's not the movie that's making me happy, or it's not the movie that's making me cry those tears of joy. It's just the movie is reflecting that movies can be part of your process to get in touch with some of those deep-seated hurts. So it can be very helpful. And then maybe you could do one of these, like watch a movie where intuitively feel it's going to really touch on your big issues and themes, and then when your emotions are up and it's real raw, then work through an instrument for peace. And that can save you thousands of years in terms of time. Because yeah, sometimes I can watch a movie and, and it does stir me, and other times I can watch a movie that I can relate things that have happened to me, but I'm very detached from it. Yeah. So it doesn't stir anything. Yeah. So to me, I look at it and I think, well, I've healed from that situation because it hasn't yeah. affected me at that time. Yeah. You notice that. But if I see something that does stir it up, then I think I need to do more work to work on that healing. Yeah. That's very intuitive, that, and that the Spirit will continue to guide you to things, workshops, or movies, or, or relationships, or whatever, that will help you speed up the healing. You know, that's what it's all about, just being really open. Okay, now we're getting down here. Um, we've got to the point, oh, we're not on number nine. Everything in the world works together for my good. What I think is the cause of my upset is not the cause at all. The choice to be upset is a choice not to see the cause, my belief in separation lack, as a present decision in my mind. It's an attempt to see the cause in the past or future, and the present as its effect. Now that's as clear as it gets. You know, either I'm making a decision right now to separate from God, and I'm upsetting myself with this crazy decision that I'm hanging on to, or, uh, which in that case, you know, would empower you to choose again. You know, see, I'm going to choose again here. I'm going to choose to be happy instead, choose to be free. Or, you believe that time is basically causative, and that you're just at the mercy. You know, you are at the mercy of of hot days and cold days. You're at the mercy of, of good movies and stinking movies. You're at the mercy of good food and bad food, food poison. Uh, you're at the mercy of tsunamis or hurricanes or tornadoes and weather patterns or earthquakes or things like that. You know, really this is bringing it down to either you're in a position where you're very helpless and powerless because you're at the mercy of time, the past and future, or you're very empowered because you start to see what's going on and you choose a miracle. You, you choose to align with your source and feel happy. And that's as simple as the spiritual journey gets. You know, this is, this is divine metaphysics. Like, this is the Christ mind given to you as straight as can be. <laughs> like, you can choose to be happy. Really. Always. It takes practice. You know, that's why we have this instrument for peace. It's because you have to keep working through it. Just like if you exercise your muscles, you know, you don't build your muscles, you know, in, in two or three movements. You know, you've got to go to the gym <laughs> or, or do a lot of movements to build it up. And it's the same with training your mind. You have to actively practice and practice with, with this, do a lot of these kind of instruments. And then all of a sudden, just like with riding a bike, you start to be like, mm, oh yeah, you can do it in your mind. Mm. What's the expectation here? Oh, yeah. I really expected that ice cream shop to be open. I really did. Or, I really expected that I signed a contract and I really expected them to pay the money that they agreed to pay there in the contract. You, know, you start to, to see that whatever you get irritated, annoyed, or upset with, if you're honest and you get good at this, you can zip it down to a time-space expectation, then that's really wanting to hang on to the ego. That's, that's all it is. And then, if you desire to let it go, that's where we're getting down to the, to the next one. Number ten, what I want right now, above all else, is peace. You know, to really want peace right now, that's a, if you have a powerful mind, it's like, Say, so put an ego on notice. I want peace. 
right now. I deserve peace right now. I am worthy of peace right now. I question thee, that self-concept that I believed in, all that lack and scarcity, I question it. I, I am willing to doubt, not my Christ identity, but I'm willing to doubt the ego. I question thee, and I voluntarily let go of E, the resulting expectation, in order to reconnect with my one goal, peace. Peace of mind is a present decision that I gratefully choose right now. Guilt and fear of consequences only seem possible because I was determined to hold on to a belief in past and future cause. I let go of the meaning I gave to the past and the future and opened my mind to the present, absolved and innocent. I am grateful for the realization that the cause of my upset, which I thought was in the world, was actually only an unquestioned belief and decision in my mind. I have decided anew for my peace of mind. So, you know, we could do a lot of workshops and seminars, but this really puts it down in a very succinct way. If we really got to cut down to the core, to the nitty gritty of what the ego's trick is and how to get past the trick, that's what this tool is for. Yeah, you, you make huge inroads uh, when you do a process like this repeatedly. It's like when you were doing the radical forgiveness work, it was very similar. It was like tracing it in to see it differently and choose again.